Hello everyone, I'm Rhonda. Welcome back to my studio. Um, today the lesson that I'm going to give you is actually on mixing grays so and blacks. So one of the things that you'll often hear from artists is that you should mix your own blacks versus, and grays versus using an actual carbon black or ivory black or whatever. And the reason behind this is that carbon black, um, ivory black, all those blacks, they tend to look very flat and dead. And so if you're using those to mix your grays, you're going to end up with colors that aren't as vibrant, aren't as um, lively, I guess is a good way to put it, as if you mix your own grays. So a lot of people wonder though, how do I mix my own blacks and grays if I have just, you know, your average colors. So that's what we're going to look at today. Uh, I've got a little chart that we're going to fill out and uh, do some color mixing and uh, I'll give you more information as we go. Okay, here we are down at my desk. So I'm going to, I've made this chart here for mixing black and blacks and grays. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix uh, one using carbon black and then I'm going to mix four other ones uh, using a variety of other colors. Now I have my standard palette out here that I normally use, which is my Hansa yellow, Daria light yellow, yellow oxide, uh, naphthol red light, pine green. This is a sort of a burnt sienna. It's one that I mixed up myself because I'm out of burnt sienna. Uh, phthalo blue, um, red violet, and my white. Now I've also added today obviously some black because we're going to be using that and this is actually raw umber. Um, I added that because I wanted to um, have just a little bit of a darker color to add um, to one of them to make it more uh, more of a black. So uh, I will go ahead and start. So let's start by mixing uh, by doing our black. So I'm going to just take some of this carbon black here and I'm just going to paint it in here so you can see it. And that way we can compare uh, this black to these other ones. So now I'm going to take that black and I'm going to mix in some white. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a gray and I'm going to put this gray at about, I'm thinking about a value three. So I have my value scale over here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take this color and I'm going to just check it against the value scale. See that's more of a two so I need to add a little bit more white to make it more of a three. Yeah that's more of a three. It's darker than a four but it's lighter than a two. So I'm going to put that in this area here. Then I'm going to add some more white and you will get up to about a six value six gray. So that's still closer to a five. So we'll add a little bit more. Get up to about a six. There we go. And then we'll go with a much lighter gray. I'm going to add quite a bit of white and I'll take it up to about an eight or a nine here. Just so you can see how it uh, changes. Yeah, that's about an eight. That's probably good. So we'll just put that in there. So you can see this is um, when you make your grays based on black. That's what you're going to get. So next thing I'm going to do then, I'm just going to clean this off a little bit here. Is I'm going to make a gray now. And how do I decide what I can use to make a gray? So your grays are going to be in the center of your wheel. So basically, if you mix either two complements, you'll come towards a gray. Uh, if you mix all three primaries, you'll come towards a gray. If I was to mix like orange, green, violet together, the three um, secondaries, I would come towards a gray, that sort of thing. So my first one that I was going to do, I'm going to do... Um, a red, yellow, and blue. So I'm going to use my three primaries 
to try and make a black and then turn it into a gray. And I'll have a link to the color wheel down in the description as well. And a uh, link in the corner to a little tip on how to read the color wheel. So I'm cleaning up my brush. So if I'm going to mix this, I have my red here that I'm going to use. And I'm going to take some yellow. I'm going to go ahead and just use my brighter yellows. My brighter yellow here. I'm going to make kind of an orange. And then when I go to mix in the thalo blue, I'm only going to take a tiny little bit because thalo blue is very strong. So there I've got, I'm going to mix that in like that. I think I'm going to take a little bit more blue into that. because I want it to be darker and more of a black. But you can see how strong that thalo blue is. So now if you look at this, and if I just put a little bit of it on here, it's quite green. Uh, so in order to get rid of the green, I'm going to add a little bit more red because the red will cancel some of that green out. So this is the color that I've got and it's not going to be like a pure black like you would get from a carbon black, but it will be very close. So here, if I paint it on here, that's the color that you get. Now, you can see already that this color just seems to have more life to it than the plain carbon black. Carbon black is very flat, it's very lifeless. This has a little bit more something to it. So now we're gonna lighten it up to that value three-ish of a gray. put that on here and it makes it makes a beautiful gray it's but you can definitely tell that it's not flat like this one and we'll go up to about a six again And one area where this comes in really handy is when you're painting animals. Um, I'll link to up in the corner to uh, painting a lesson that I did on painting a donkey. And I, this is how I mixed the grays for painting the donkey. I, uh, I did it using some of, some of these color mixes are actually ones that I used on that donkey painting. And you'll notice, like, if you look at this one here, the value eight one, look at how much more um interesting that gray is than this one this gray it just it has way more life to it it just seems like a more it, it's it's not flat and dead and that's i know i keep saying that over again but i hope you can see the difference when you look at this i'll, I'll take a picture of this page afterwards and post it for you guys so that you can really see that difference and you, you just you train your eye to be able to see these things it's a very important part of being a painter. So another way that I can do a, a, um, um, a black is I can use compliments. So one of the compliments that I like to use to make nice grays is green and red. They're opposite each other on the color wheel. So when you mix them together, they're going to tend to go more tertiary towards the gray. Now, one thing that I did, I'll just show you this here. So if I take the red and the green, and I mix them together, you tend to definitely get more of a brown quite often, even if you add more green. And the reason for that is just these particular pigments. Um, this is more of a red orange and um, the pine green on the pigment wheel. Um, let's see if I have it on this pigment wheel. Uh, I don't have it on this pigment wheel, but it's kind of down in this area and the naphtha red lights more in this area. So you're not going to get right into that center area. So that's where I like to take something like the raw umber and add a little bit of raw umber to it. Because that, what that raw umber will do is it will darken it down quite a bit. 
So this one is going to be more of a brown. But it's also more like what you would see in nature. And this is something that I find when I'm painting animals. It's very rare for you to get um, a pure black like this on an animal. Usually it's some sort of shade of brown or it's got some purple in it, that sort of thing. If you look at cats in the sunlight, you'll definitely see that. It's very rare to have a pure black cat. I'm just going to add a little bit more to that and darken that down just a touch more. Now we'll add some of our white. And you can see that this is going to be a much more browny gray. But it is a very toned, it's a very toned brown is what that gives you, which can be extremely useful when you're painting animals. It's a very toned brown, almost a gray. And you can see how these are all various shades of gray, but these ones have more life to them. So next one that I wanted to do that makes a really pretty gray that I've been doing uh, for my donkeys is uh, burnt sienna and blue. So your burnt sienna sits about here on your color wheel and your blue is over here. Now I have a phthalo blue, so it's going to be a little bit to the blue green side, but mixing those two will make quite a nice gray. So that's the next one I'm going to do. Take my burnt sienna and a little bit of phthalo blue. And this one here I use quite a bit when I'm doing blacks on horses because it's such a nice color. Make it a little bit more, make a bigger pile of it. It, it just makes such a nice color. I really like this one for doing when I'm doing bay horses. And you see that one is very close to a black. It doesn't have the greenish tinge that this one does very close to a black but it it just it looks like it has a, a brighter look to it and feel to it it's a deeper color and i think that's that's one of the things why this one is so flat is it's just it's that black just takes the the brightness and the the life out of the color like it just and there are some artists that will do a lot of their painting with um that will do some of their painting with blacks. And I'm, I'm going to be learning uh, in my classes, I'm learning some other, uh, some special palettes that use black. And so that's, um, it, it, can, it definitely has its uses, but if I'm just painting, like say I'm painting like a donkey or something, and I'm gonna be using different grays, I'm going to definitely try and mix my own and you can see when you mix your own grays too look at the variety of grays that I'm getting here I'm going everywhere from kind of like a greenish gray to a this is more of a um, of a blue gray and you can just create so much more interest in the animal that you're painting too by creating your own uh, grays because if I was just to use black and white I'm very limited just the only way I can make the gray different is by adding more white to it. Whereas by doing this, look at all these different gray tones that I can use in my donkey when I'm painting it. We'll do one more that I have used in the past. So for this one, I'm going to take yellow, blue, and green. So if I take yellow, blue, and green, it's going to tend to be 
um, over in, in this zone over here. So it's not going to be a perfect gray because I'm not going across the color wheel. Um, but then I'm also going to include that burnt sienna in it. And what the burnt sienna is going to do, because the burnt sienna leans towards the red, burnt sienna will cancel out that really green color. So by mixing those four colors together, mixing these three together will give you a nice tertiary kind of a greenish color. And then adding in the burnt sienna is going to pull you closer towards the center of your color wheel. So let's show you that. So I'm going to start with my get some green, yellow, add in some of that blue. So that makes you, you know, kind of this darker, more toned green. And then I'm going to add in the burnt sienna. And you see immediately adding that red in there takes that from being this bright, vibrant green to being a very toned color. And you can see that is the bit of a greeny black. So again, you're making something that is usable as a black but it has life to it. I'm going to add some white to that. And if I feel like it's too green, like this might be just a little more green than I want, I'll just add a touch more of the burnt sienna. That takes away some of that green. This color I find is really nice for painting animals. It's, it's just, it's another one of those ones that's sort of greenish, but it's just a very nice color. So there you have it. That's just a quick demonstration on how to paint grays. And get rid of that light there so that you can actually see it. Uh, how to create blacks and grays. So if you're looking at this, probably the nicest black we have is this burnt sienna and blue. That makes a very nice black. Um, if you're looking at the grays, it all depends on what you're going for. If you want a really nice light gray that has some life to it, this one is really pretty. If you want something that's a little bit more bluish you got this one if you want to make them cooler i would say take this one and i would add a little bit of violet to it to cool it off so that's kind of how i mix my grays when i'm making you know donkeys and that sort of thing or any kind of a gray animal mountains this is perfect for mountains um and it gives you so much more variety as opposed to just your straight carbon black and white because like i say again over here the only way to change your gray is to add more white. So all you can do is change the, the, um, the value of it. You can go from here to here, change your value, but you can't do any variety. You can't create other tones of gray. And that's where you need to learn how to do your color mixing because colors like this will make much more beautiful animals and make more beautiful mountains, rocks, that sort of thing. Add so much more variety and interest to your painting. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And I post new uh, teaching videos on Mondays and I post tiny tips on Tuesdays. So you can look forward to that. And in the comments below, how about you tell me if you've ever taken a color theory class? I'd be very interested. And if you learned anything really good from that, I have a color theory class that I'm taking that I highly, highly recommend. And I'll have a link to that in the description.